out of there folks it's Geist with another Destiny 2 video uh, today we're gonna be discussing some of the big changes coming up uh, Bungie just released a TWAB today with some really juicy details uh, a lot of changes that are gonna be coming to our weapons and that, that's most of what I'm gonna cover um, I highly recommend that you guys read the entire TWAB uh, it's the uh, this week at Bungie 1111 2021 uh, but just a quick look at some of this and I'm gonna be reading through some notes here uh, and obviously I'm talking through a mask, so just bear with me, guys. Uh, it's not exactly super easy to read through, but let's see here. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, linear fusion rifles. Uh, they're going to be changing those. They're getting an increase in PVE damage by 10%. Shotguns, slug shotgun PVE damage is going from 30% to 20%. This is a reduction to the previous bonus they had. Pellet shotguns, however, are getting a 10% PVE damage bonus. Uh, caster swords, they're reducing the heavy attack ammo cost from 8 to 5. Bows, oh yeah, those are getting an increase uh, against damage, getting an increased damage versus rank and file enemies by 10%. Sidearms and fusion rifles will now be hit scan. That's going to be great for PvE and PvP. They were not previously hit scan. Uh, sidearms were projectile as were fusion rifles. They will now be hit scan, so that's pretty great. Ooh, here we go. Uh, had to see this one coming. Vex Mythoclast. Uh, they're reducing its aim assist by 25. They're reducing the linear fusion rifle mode aim assist cone scaler from 1.1 to 1.05. And it will now require three eliminations for full overcharge. Uh, hopefully that'll make the Vex a little bit less sticky. Uh, I feel like they should have maybe reduced the fire rate a little bit. Still kind of kind of delete people, but maybe it'll be a little bit less uh, forgiving, so it won't be as easy to do that. And uh, Fighting Lion, they are removing the multi-hit requirement. Dealing any damage will grant the buff. They are increased the buff to the reload stat from plus 50 to plus 70. Reload will still be slow if you miss, but if you land any damage, Fighting Lion will reload faster than it did before the nerf. And they increase the buff duration to 7 seconds. Airbalus now has intrinsic anti-barrier, which is awesome. We've been asking for that for a while. Uh, Soros Regime. Dual mode receiver mode now grants the following in addition to its current effects. Plus 30 range, plus 3 zoom. Cryosthesia, this is kind of a, a little bit of a confusing one, but kind of a big one. It's essentially a rework. So they've removed variable trigger completely. Now fires on trigger press instead of release. This will make it feel much more responsive. Charge shot moved to special reload. Getting a final blow with the sidearm enables access to the special reload. Once the charge shot is fired, the weapon reverts back to standard sidearm mode. This does not cost your entire magazine. Charge shot now causes an AoE which freezes AI and slows players. Direct hits still freeze. Leviathan's Breast Catalyst will now grant Archer's Tempo in addition to its other effects. Pretty sweet. Uh, Whisper of the Worm. Big buff to this here. And to Darcy. Whisper of the Worm. They've reduced the delay on activating Whisper... Breathing from the catalyst from 2.1 seconds to 1.2 seconds. <laughs> kind of just swapped some numbers there. White Nail Magazine refill has changed. It was 3 from inventory, but now pulls 2 from the inventory and 1 from thin air. And they've increased its PvE damage by 10%. Big buff for that. That's going to be awesome to use again. Darcy. Reduced flinch, recoil, and accuracy degradation by 50% while personal assistant is active. Personal assistant now has a 1 second delay before deactivating when off target was instant and they've increased its damage in PVE by 20% which is substantial so Darcy boss DPS maybe here's the big one this is the one that, that, that's got me super excited for the big two really malfeasance increased explosion damage by 50% now through my testing in the crucible of course malfeasance will kill anybody any resilience in five shots at any range um, Against a super, you pretty much have to get all headshots with it to consistently get the five tap. Um, with this increase, with the increased explosion damage by 50%, I did some math, and I tested it on a few supers again, ran some numbers, and it looks like it might be just enough that it will allow malfeasance to body shot any super in five shots. You may still have to get a headshot or two, but... That increase in damage should be just enough to finish off most supers in five body shots. 
because when you do it typically you land five body shots on a super the explosions will go off and uh, after they go off typically it takes one to three shots to finish them off it just depends on the resilience of the super now that one to three damage we're talking about roughly roughly 18 damage a shot and the explosions from malfeasance typically go off around 15 per explosion so that's five instances of 15 and uh, so that extra 50% should add up just enough to finish off most supers. Dead Man's Tail. This is a big one. Now this is more for my console players, not so much PC. Uh, you guys know I'm a console player, but they are specifically trying to buff it to make it better on console without breaking it on PC again since Dead Man's was never really broken on console. It was mostly broken on PC. So it looks like it's kind of getting the last word treatment. They're increasing the reticle friction fall off distance no effect on mouse and keyboard because that doesn't exist for them it just basically means that uh, the reticle is going to be a lot stickier for us at longer distance and I assume this is mostly referring to the hip fire less recoil reduced effect on mouse and keyboard again they don't have hardly any recoil anyways but less recoil for us on console and they're improving its accuracy again doesn't do much for mouse and keyboard because they already have pinpoint accuracy that's amazing uh, really looking forward to the malfeasance changes in the dead man's tail. Still no word on the malfeasance catalyst. Who knows, maybe that'll be coming soon. Now the air apparent catalyst, uh, they reduce damage resistance against players from 75% to 25%. So no longer will air apparent just be a free round in Crucible. In something like Trials, that's, that's going to be great. Lorenz Driver. Removed ability energy regeneration on picking up a telemetry. Yeah, I feel like they could reduce its aim assist, but that's good enough, I guess. Traveler's Chosen now grants 10% ability energy per stack on activation. Uh, was previously more generous on low stacks, less generous on high stacks. The average and amount for 10 stacks are unchanged. Reduced stacks granted on a guardian defeat from 3 to 2. Now for the perks. Adrenaline Junkie. Eliminations with the weapon can add single damage stacks or extend existing ones. Grenade eliminations boost the stacks immediately to times 5. Lower the duration to compensate for weapon activation. Kind of a buff. They said they were going to do that. Uh, this next perk I'm super excited about. This is Vorpal Weapon. Um, if you guys didn't already know, that's my favorite perk. Period. Uh, previously, Vorpal Weapon was a must-pick on just about all weapons, including heavies. It was just a flat 15% damage on all weapons. Now, Vorpal will give 10% on heavy weapon, 15% on special, and 20% on primary. No change to damage versus players in super. The original intent for Vorpal by Bungie was that Vorpal was supposed to make primaries more viable for DPS against boss targets and yellow bar targets. So now, with that increased damage on primaries and reduction to the others, it won't be such a must pick on the others, but primaries should feel even better when they have Vorpal. So that's, that's awesome. I'm super excited about that. This next one kind of hurts, though. Whirlwind Blade, they're increasing the number of stacks needed to hit maximum damage from 5 to 10. That's just a flat Whirlwind Blade nerf. Uh, kind of sucks. I, I guess at some point that was going to come, uh, come out, but... Uh, to be honest, I haven't really used that. I don't really use that anywhere except for Atrax and Deepstone anyway, so I guess it's not too big of a deal. We just have to come up with other options for that. Uh, and Pulse Monitor. They've changed the threshold for activation from 90% health to 30% shield. So this now requires much less damage to trigger. So Pulse Monitor should be a much more useful perk. Mods. They are changing the functionality of Quick Access Sling. It was plus 100 in handling, 0.9 ready stow aim down sights time for 0.4 seconds after running out of ammo, so after emptying it. Now it will be 0.9 ready stow time all the time. So you won't really have that instant ADS, so snapshot is definitely still going to be necessary to run with this now for any of your legendary weapons, but essentially if you take any legendary weapon now, this doesn't end, it just no longer requires you to empty the mag. If you take any legendary weapon with snapshot 
and you put quick access sling on it, it's going to have instant ready and stow times as well as instant ADS times. So that's going to make for some really quick swapping builds. So I'm kind of excited about that. Full auto retrofit. They are adding a full auto retrofit weapon mod that enables full auto while the trigger is held. Usable on legendary hand cannon, sidearm, scout rifles, and pulse rifles. This is unlocked by default for all players. So what this means is they are going to allow you to just basically slot a mod on those legendary weapons I just said, and then it's going to allow them to just be full auto. Now I don't know if this is going to occupy the same slot or if this is like a side thing. It's going to have its own slot for the time being. I, I don't really know. Um, but eventually that's just going to be an option in the menu that we can all toggle on and off. So you'll just have auto fire for everything. I think this is to make it easier for people with like, you know, arthritis issues or, or whatever the case is that prevents them from being able to click the trigger as faster or just people who might not be as quick on the trigger as others. It's sort of to level the playing field just a little bit. And that's pretty much it for all the balance changes. They did mention that they're going to be doing something to help all exotics generate orbs even if they don't necessarily have the catalyst. I kind of wish they would just give us the catalyst, hint, hint, bungee, but we'll just see as time goes on. Um, but as it stands, that was a pretty meaty twab. I'm super excited about the changes. I hope you guys are. The malfeasance and the DMT buffs have got me over the top. You guys know I love those two guns, especially malfeasance. Uh, no changes to bows, but don't really, exp or well, PVP wise. But I don't really expect that anyways because uh, they'd, they'd be too overpowered, I guess. But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful evening.